Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, and in episode 2 of the How to Make a Random Dungeon Generation, we will pick up where we left off and get the rooms to actually spawn in game. Obviously, I highly recommend you watch the first episode of the series to properly follow along. With that said, let's get cracking. So in Mono Develop, I have a bunch of comments underlining what I must now do. A spawn point, for example, with an opening direction value of 1 needs a bottom door for a connection between the two rooms. So before actually writing the code to spawn a room, let's head back into Unity, create a new empty game object called Room Templates, then create a new c -sharp script called Room Templates and drag and drop that script onto our newly created object. I'll then open it up in Mono Develop. We will now create four public game object arrays. One called bottom rooms, the other top rooms, left rooms and right rooms. Heading back into Unity, we can now drag and drop all of our rooms into the right arrays. So a room with a letter B, for example, will be placed in the bottom rooms array. Some rooms with multiple letters will be drag and dropped into multiple arrays. The room called TB, for example, meaning the room with a door to the top and at the bottom, will be placed in the top rooms array and the bottom rooms array. I'll also create and add to this room templates game object a tag that I'll simply name rooms. Placing all the rooms inside this one room templates game object is much cleaner and quicker than drag and dropping all the rooms inside of each and every spawn point. So now all we must do inside of the room spawner script, which I remind you is attached to every single spawn point, is grab a reference to this room template script. And this is very easy to do. I'll create a new private variable of type room templates called templates and in my start function, set this templates variable equal to the game object with a tag called rooms, and more precisely, the room templates component attached to that game object. Now we have access to all the arrays in that room template script. Awesome! So in my if statement here, we want to spawn a room with a bottom door. So all I need to do is type instantiate and then in the parentheses state what object I would like to spawn, at what position and at what rotation. So I would like to spawn a room with a bottom door, so I'll type templates.bottomrooms. Since this is an array, I also need to state an index inside the square brackets. I'll want to spawn a random room with a bottom door. So I'll create a new int variable up here called rand and then set that variable equal to a random number between 0 and the amount of rooms in my bottom room array using template.bottomroom.length. Now I can fill in those square brackets with an index of rand and simply spawn the room at the spawn point's current position and for a rotation, I'll choose to spawn it with its default rotation. But if you don't want any rotation, you can simply type quaternion.identity. I'll then do the exact same thing for the other if statements simply changing bottom room with top, left and right rooms. All this is great, but we of course don't want rooms spawning every single frame our game runs. We must find a way to prevent rooms from spawning as soon as a room has actually been spawned. What I'll do is simply turn this update function into a function called spawn and then invoke this function in my start method. Invoke is basically a way to call a function in your script, but with a time delay, which in our case is particularly useful since we don't want all rooms spawning at the same time because collisions would not properly be detected. But we will get to that in a little moment. For now, simply type the name of the function you would like to call between quotation marks, and then type in some float value for your time delay. I think 0.1 seconds should be fine. To be on the safe side and make sure that our spawn point only spawns one room and not multiple ones, 
I'll create a new public bool variable called spawns and then make an if statement checking whether spawns is equal to false. If it is, then we know our spawn point hasn't yet spawned any room. And so we will copy and paste this block of code inside our new if statement. However, as soon as the room has been instantiated, I will set spawn equal to true. And now the code inside this function will no longer run. And as a result, extra rooms will not appear in the scene. Before testing all of this out, I will do one last thing. I need to make sure that there isn't already a room at that position. Because if there is, you guessed it, we don't want this spawn point spawning another room and getting our scene looking like a total chaotic mess. And this is where our box collider, rigid body and spawn point tag comes into play. I'll create a new function called onTriggerEnter2D and in the parentheses type Collider2D other. This function will get called every time the spawn point collides with something and this variable called other will be equal to whatever the spawn point has collided with. And so we will now check whether what we have collided with has a tag called spawn point. If it does and its spawned bool variable is equal to true, then we know a room has already been instantiated at that position. And so we will simply destroy this spawn point and thus preventing it from spawning another room. If I now head back into Unity, double check that my spawn points have a spawn point tag, a collider set to trigger and a rigid body, I can then hit play and if I've done everything right, especially typed in the right value for the opening direction for each spawn point, I will get what looks like a working and fun random dungeon generation. And that will mark the end of this video. In the final episode of the series, we will fix one important quirk which can leave our dungeon with some troublesome openings and we'll then finish up by defining an exit room in which our player can battle some boss or collect treasure. We will also discuss how one could expand on this system. With that said, have a great day. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and feel like supporting the channel. It would be so appreciated. As always, don't hesitate to join the awesome Blackthorn Prod community and following me on Twitter. Okay, stay tuned for episode 3 coming out very soon. Cheers!